Can you break into Superman's house? If you are the most powerful person on the planet, you are undoubtedly going to make some very powerful enemies. And you can't just keep things, oh, expertly hidden forever. Eventually, you're gonna need a place to stash all your super stuff. Superman's Fortress of Solitude is the perfect place for this, and he keeps it under lock and key. But I'm not sure it's as secure as Superman thinks it is. Can you break into Superman's house? Oh, oh, who am I? Who could say? Today's question was brought to my attention by at FireWizard1000 on Twitter, and it's specifically about the Fortress of Solitude as portrayed in All-Star Superman. Instead of some incredible security system, Superman has just a simple house key placed under a mat. But that key, according to him, weighs half a million tons because he crafted it from a, quote, dwarf star. Superman claims that he is therefore the only person on Earth that can lift and use the key. Or is he? Let's run the numbers. First, Superman's key is made out of dwarf star material. So what is a dwarf star? In astronomical terms, a dwarf star is just a star with a relatively small size and power output or luminosity compared to the rest of the stars in the universe. Technically then, our own sun is a dwarf star, but I don't think this is the kind of star that Superman means. Ooh, ooh, that sunlight feels good. Ooh, just one second. Superman doesn't just say it's dwarf star material. He also says that that material is super dense. And if that's the case, I think he is referring to white dwarf stars. White dwarf stars are smoldering stellar cores that are what are left over after a star dies if it doesn't have enough mass to become something else. And they are ridiculously dense. A white dwarf star can pack the same amount of mass that the sun has in the same amount of volume that the Earth has. And the Earth is a million times smaller than the sun. White dwarf densities, therefore, can range between 10,000 and 10 million grams for every cubic centimeter of volume. And this material would, in fact, make a key very, very heavy. But that all depends on how big that key is. It's hard to actually tell just how big Superman's Fortress of Solitude key is, so I measured my own house key, which looked similar enough. My key had roughly one cubic centimeter of volume. Now, some of you might be able to see the problem already. We just said that white dwarf densities range from 10 kilograms per cubic centimeter to 10,000, and half a million tons, what Superman states, is 500 million kilograms. Do the math given our range of white dwarf densities and you get a mass for Superman's fortress key of between nine kilograms, nine kilograms and 9,000 kilograms. If Superman really was talking about white dwarf stars, he was off by a whole cal hell of a lot. He wouldn't even be within one one hundredth of a percent of his stated half a million ton value. It's the equivalent of me saying to Lois, hey Lois, look at this marker here. It weighs literally as much as a blue whale. And then it only weighs as much as a house cat. Ooh, Superman, oh, you're so strong, oh geez. If Superman really crafted his key out of a white dwarf star, Best case scenario, you would just be able to pick up the key yourself and unlock the door. It would weigh less than 25 pounds. Or, or worst case scenario, you could simply use any piece of decently robust heavy machinery to pick up the key and unlock the door. 9,000 kilograms is just not that much. It's the mass of a large elephant, and we can airlift those pachyderms just about anywhere. If Superman really made his key out of white dwarf star material, it would be a huge oversight. And dude's got x-ray vision, or what we call if the key is really made out of what Superman says, then any bad guy with heavy machinery can easily rig up a way to pick up the key, insert it into the lock, and break into the Fortress of Solitude. So what if the key was actually half a million tons? The Titanic is in here? If white dwarf star density doesn't work, we can do the calculation the other way around. Take Superman's half a million tons value and divide by the volume of our key and just see what the density turns out to be. 
Do that and you find that if the key has to fit 500 million kilograms into its volume, it has to pack half a million kilograms into every single cubic millimeter. Scaling things up a bit, this required density for our key is the equivalent of stuffing an entire mountain's worth of mass into this box, literally. This is so dense that maybe Superman was mistaken about the kind of star he used to craft his key. Instead of a white dwarf star, what if he meant neutron star? How do I breathe or move out here? Famously, neutron stars are made out of the densest stuff that can still be considered stuff in the universe. They are so dense that they are basically just the innards of atoms packed so closely together that the laws of quantum mechanics dictate that if they got any closer together, a black hole would form. If Superman made his Fortress of Solitude key out of neutron star material by accident, it would have five trillion kilograms of mass. This is more than all the fish weigh. And more importantly for our calculations, it is 10,000 times more than that half a million tons that Clark said. So again, he would be way off. Am I like ejecting mass? How am I moving? Now I know what you may be thinking. Why don't we just, whoop, why don't, whoop, why don't we just use the calculated density value that we just got and apply that to the dwarf star that Superman was using? Just stipulate that whatever star he had has that density. That's the problem. A dwarf star can't have that density. Inside a white dwarf star, it's not thermal energy like in our sun that is preventing further collapse due to gravity. It's electrons and what's called electron degeneracy pressure. Those electrons inside of the white dwarf star don't want to occupy the same space as their neighbors and so they fight gravity that way. But this doesn't go on forever. If the core of a white dwarf star has or attains 1.4 solar masses, 1.4 times the mass of our sun, it hits the chandra sekhar limit, which is the limit at which electron degeneracy pressure can no longer fight gravity. And then it collapses down into a neutron star with neutron degeneracy pressure supporting it against gravity. And it can be 100,000 times smaller and therefore way, way more dense. Because of this collapse limit, Superman's key density density kind of has to be one or the other. Again, the Man of Steel's numbers are not ideal. Let's give Superman one last chance. If he really is correct about the mass of his fortress key, how would the shape of that key have to change in order to accommodate it? Okay, again, let's assume that Superman is really using white dwarf star material to craft his key and that the key still has to look like a key. How thick would that key have to be to have the correct density and the half a million tons value? Well, let's start with the thickness of a single key. And now let's see how thick the key would have to be. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Wow! <laughs> Silly. Hmm. For the Fortress of Solitude key to have the correct stated mass and the correct white dwarf star density and still look like a key, it would have to be 87 meters thick, almost as thick as a football field is long. Come on, Kent, get one part of this right, dang. Just to be thorough, let's see if the thickness changes if Smart Boy Superman actually used neutron star material and the key would have to still look like a key. Then the key would just be this thick. Oh, I'm sorry, were you having trouble seeing that? That's because this kind of key would need to be four micrometers thick. Your eyelid is 200 times thicker than that. Come on, Clark, dang! No matter how we interpret Superman's famous key, there's a bigger problem. You can't make a key out of star material, neutron, white dwarf, or otherwise. Never mind making a key out of a dwarf star like our sun, that's just plasma and it would pfft 
evaporate away. The atoms and the parts of atoms that make up white dwarf and neutron stars are only so close together and so tightly packed because of their own gravity pulling them together. Sure, Superman may be strong enough to go inside of one of these stars and craft a key in there. Okay, that's fine. But if he were to remove that key from this environment, that gravity is no longer holding all of this pressure that wants to get out together. Bring a key like this, even if it were solid here to Earth, and it would want to resume a more uncompressed shape. Imagine half a million tons of material instantly and violently expanding in your face. It would be like a nuclear bomb going off. Yeah, it would be bad. At this point, even using Superman's original Fortress of Solitude key would make more sense. It was a giant thing that took a hundred men to lift. Now, I sound like I'm being very debunky here, and I don't want to be. I think this Fortress key concept is very interesting and very clever. So let me offer just one suggestion, just one line of dialogue that would have to change. Superman could show his key to Lois and say, hey Lois, I crafted this key out of neutron star material and it weighs a billion tons and Kryptonian technology keeps it from exploding in my hand. How cool is that? But as it stands right now, I guess I gotta go break into Superman's house. This weighs less than my cat. So, given the famous frames from All-Star Superman, is Kal-El really the only person on Earth that can lift and use the key to his Fortress of Solitude? Well, that depends. Do we take Superman at his word? Because if the key is really made out of dwarf star material, then at the low end, you could pick it up unaided. And at the high end, you could pick it up with heavy machinery that you could get just about anywhere. And if it's really half a million tons, then it can't be dwarf star material. And if Superman got that that wrong, the key would have to stop looking like a key and more like something that is completely transparent or stupid thick. But hey, if I had a secret ice palace with a cool key, I'd be bragging too. Because the numbers are so weird here, maybe in front of Lois Lane, Superman was just trying to sound like a brainiac. Because science. But who would, who would know if I said such a thing? Who would, who, who am I? So here's one thing that would look probably absolutely right. Given the range of the masses that we're looking at for the key and the surface area of the key and the compressive strength of stone, the key could plausibly leave an impression of itself in the stone just like you see in the comic. Thank you so much for watching, Caitlin. If you want more of me, go back to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com. If you go there, subscribe, sign up for a free trial even, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry. If you want to follow me and Because Science on social media, you can do so here at these handles, and you can even suggest to me ideas for future episodes, like this one. How cool was that, at Fired Wizard 1000 